It is the end of October and that means here in the lakes autumn is in full swing. Now for the last couple of years we've had quite high winds around this time of year and that's stripped all the trees of their autumn colour. So this year I've got to make up for some lost time. Today's Thursday and this morning I've come to Tarn House and we'll come back to why I'm here in a moment. But before we do that, let's have a recap of my week so far. Monday was probably the best day for photography that we've had all autumn. It was beautifully clear, beautifully still, had some gorgeous light and to start with even some mist. Unfortunately, on Sunday I injured my back and so I decided to take Monday off to rest up and try and heal it up pretty quick and, and that worked brilliantly. Uh, I have some stretching exercises that I have to do and some anti-inflammatories and stuff like that and come Tuesday morning I was absolutely fine but because of my bad back I missed a brilliant day. So come Tuesday morning, I was raring to go. And so I set off for the Duke of Portland Boathouse on Oldswater. Now it's been nearly two years since I last shot there. And so I thought it was about time I made another trip. Now before I set out, I had a look at some of my shots that I'd taken before and decided that I needed to change my composition a little. Now, you have to be very careful when shooting at the Duke of Portland Boathouse because it's on the edge of a road. And that's why I was wearing my delightful orange jacket. But for a change, I actually decided to shoot down on the edge of the lake. And that changes the perspective quite a lot. And I also tried to shoot as far around to the left as I could possibly get to show a bit more of the front of the boathouse. So I was actually pretty pleased with the results of that shoot. going to struggle to get anything unique at the Duke of Portland Boathouse and on Tuesday morning I counted six other photographers, that's seven photographers including myself. And I wasn't even the first one there, a chap called Adrian beat me to the prime spot but it was actually quite nice to spend the morning chatting to a couple of the other guys and that's something that I think I really miss when I'm out shooting on my own. Over the years, I've learned a few things that help me to make the most of the autumn colour. Now, around this time of year, my polarizer really comes into its own. Now, I use a Lee landscape polarizer. And like all polarizers, it does a couple of things. It helps you to control contrast by darkening the sky. And it also helps you to remove glare and reflections from your images. Now, at the Duke of Portland Boathouse, what happens is that the sun rises from the east and it casts light right onto the front of the boathouse. And that means that you can get some, a lot of glare from the front of the boathouse. So this helps to cut that out. Now, this is a landscape polarizer, and what it does is it slightly warms, it slightly enhances some of the more natural colors like the oranges and yellows. And so that really helps you make the most out of autumn. Now, this image shows two photos that I took at the boathouse. The first one was with the polarizer at its minimum, and the second one is with the polarizer cranked to the max, and I think it really helps you to see the difference that you get when using a landscape polarizer. After I'd finished at the Duke of Portland Boathouse, I headed for Aero Force. I wanted to get that classic shot of the waterfall from the viewing platform. Unfortunately, when I arrived, I found that the autumn colors weren't quite as well developed as I would have liked them to have been, particularly around the bottom of the waterfall, which was still pretty green. But the canopy above the waterfall was beautiful. It was a blaze of orange color. So what I decided to do was to try to shoot a fair bit wider than I would normally to try and include more of that. This brings me on to my second tip for making the most of the autumn color. And some of you might think this is a little bit of a cheat, but if you find yourself shooting as I did at Aero Force and the autumn color wasn't as developed as you would have liked, you can always give nature a little bit of a helping hand. So what I do when I get the photo into Lightroom is I use the HSL sliders. 
and I move my greens slightly towards the yellow and I, use, I move my yellows slightly towards the orange and that just helps to bring out a few more of those autumnal colours. Now that is a little bit of a cheat and I nearly got caught out a little while ago when I was at Borrowdale. I took a beautiful shot uh, looking down the River Derwent and again it wasn't quite as I would have liked so I gave it a little bit of a tweak posted that up onto Facebook and then a friend of mine, Hugh, got very excited saying all oh, the colours were looking amazing and I, I kind of had to fess up a little bit and say, you know, this was a little bit, uh, a little bit fake. Yesterday I had one of the most enjoyable mornings photography of the year so far. I'd been asked by a chap called Tsonda to find a specific view of Luffrig Tarn from Luffrig Fell. And so yesterday morning, I collected him from the YHA in Borodale, drove him to Grasmere, and then together we climbed up to Luffrig Fell. And when we arrived, we found the scene was absolutely beautiful. We'd had a very hard frost because the skies were very, very clear and the autumn colors were beautiful, looking all hues of yellow and orange. And we spent about an hour, an hour and a half taking lots of different photos of that scene. We started to shoot before the sun had broken the horizon and continued to shoot for about an hour after it had risen. And one of the things that I've noticed when I shoot and it's blue skies is generally I like to get my photography done before the sun is up. I'm gonna show you two images now. One that was taken before the sun had risen and one was taken about half an hour afterwards. Now I prefer the first shot. I think it's much more subtle. The second shot has much more saturated colours, there's much more contrast in the image. And I actually think that this is a little bit too much, but I'd be really interested to hear what you think. on one-to-ones I don't shoot at all I am 100% focused on what the other photographer is doing I try to give them the benefit of my local knowledge as well as some help with some of the more technical aspects of photography but Sonder is a, an experienced photographer he's been shooting for nearly 20 years and so he didn't need an awful lot of input from me and so he very kindly allowed me to shoot as well and on top of that he was a really interesting guy and really interesting to talk to and I had an absolutely fantastic morning with him and sometimes I have to pinch myself when I realise that this is this is actually my job now. This morning I decided I wanted to come to Tarn House. I wanted to get another classic composition of the Tarn from the hill that's just to your right. I spent about half an hour up there and again I tried to get my shots done before the sun broke the horizon. Now I actually had a lot more time than I thought and so what I was able to do was to experiment with a few different compositions. One of the big problems that I have with the shot up there is that in the bottom right hand side you have to include a little bit too much uh, of the bracken and that's a little bit boring. And so what I decided to do is to try and use the rock that sits up there to fill that gap. Now ultimately I won't know if that's been successful until I get home and have a look at the shots on the computer. But here for you are both of the shots, one with the stone, one without. And again, let me know which you think is the better shot.
Once I'd finished up on the hill, I decided to drop down to the edge of the tarn where I am now. And I came down here to get one specific composition, and that's of these trees here on the edge of the tarn. Now at this time of year, when the sun breaks the horizon, it really illuminates the trunks and it creates a really nice contrasty shot. And we've also got beautiful reflections. So this is an absolutely gorgeous shot. Now I've shot this before and I've got one of my favorite ever shots here, but I do like to return to my, these, my favorite locations from time to time and just see if I can get something a little bit different. <laughs> I was talking earlier about shooting with a polarizer and I shoot probably 95% if not more with my polarizer on. But I need to be really, really careful with it. Particularly shooting around autumn. Now I've found that some of the shots that I've taken this year, I've actually had to desaturate some of the oranges because that polarizer has a tendency, particularly when it's cranked right up, to really kind of overdo it. So I had to be a little bit careful. And also I have to be careful when shooting in blue skies. So I think when you've got a really strong subject like these pine trees, if you have a very dark sky, it can be quite distracting. And I actually, in this case, like a slightly lighter sky. So these are the two shots that I've taken this morning and I prefer the first, but which one do you like the most? I'm generally quite pleased with the photographs that I've taken this week. I mean, admittedly, I've had some very, very nice conditions. And I even ended up in a location that I never would have gone to before if it hadn't been at the request of somebody who wanted to join me for a one-to-one. -one. However, there's also been a slightly other noticeable difference in my approach to photography this week, and that is that I haven't been vlogging. I've been shooting B-roll, but I haven't been doing anything to camera and that has largely allowed me to concentrate on my photography. And I think there is an improvement in my images. I think my images are much better because I'm not trying to think about what I need to be saying to uh, the camera. Now that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop vlogging, far from it. But as a full-time photographer, there are going to be times when the photography is going to have to come first, particularly when conditions are as good as they have been this week.